It was just another quiet evening in the small town of Petaluma, California. Polly Kloss, a bright and bubbly 12-year-old, was hosting a slumber party with two of her closest friends. Laughter filled the air as the girls immersed themselves in the usual fun, telling stories, playing games, and enjoying their youthful innocence. But as the night wore on, none of them could have imagined that this would be the night that everything would change. A night that would become one of the most shocking kidnappings in American history. What happens when safety, something we all take for granted, is shattered? When the boundaries between safety and danger blur, it forces us to confront a terrifying reality. That's the problem we'll be exploring today. How does a peaceful life turn into a nightmare in a matter of moments? And how can such tragedies be prevented? Stay with me, because by the end of this video, you'll not only understand Polly Kloss's tragic story, but also what could have been done differently and what we can all learn from this chilling event. It was nearing midnight when the unthinkable happened. A man broke into Polly's home, holding the girls at knife point. In an instant, the joy of a sleepover turned into paralyzing fear. The man bound Polly's friends and took Polly with him. Imagine the sheer horror of being ripped away from your safe space, with no idea what's coming next. What would you do? What could anyone do in that situation? That's the first open loop. What happened to Polly Kloss after she was kidnapped? The FBI, local law enforcement, and even everyday civilians launched one of the largest search efforts in history. But the question remains, could Polly have been saved? Or was this fate inevitable? Here's where the real crux of the problem lies. The system, society's safety net, failed Polly. Despite the massive manhunt and the advanced investigative techniques used by the FBI, Richard Allen Davis, the man responsible for her kidnapping, had been in and out of jail multiple times. The question then becomes, how do we stop violent offenders from slipping through the cracks? That's where we come face to face with a difficult issue. The justice system is designed to rehabilitate criminals, but at what cost? Do we risk the lives of innocent people in the hopes of giving criminals another chance? Or should more be done to protect those like Polly? The pros of rehabilitation-focused justice are clear. It can reduce recidivism and help offenders become productive members of society. But the cons? When the system fails, as it did in this case, the results can be tragic and irreversible. What do you think? Should the system lean more towards leniency or stricter enforcement? Think about that, because it's something we'll revisit before the end of this video. Months passed with no sign of Polly. The entire country was on edge. Flyers were posted, search teams combed the countryside, and yet the mystery remained unsolved. What clues did the FBI find? And how did they finally track down Richard Allen Davis? Here's where the twist comes in. Davis had been stopped for a DUI mere hours after the kidnapping, but he was let go. Could Polly have been saved that very night if law enforcement had acted differently? Imagine the frustration of knowing that the man responsible for the crime was within reach. And yet, he slipped through. That moment is where many of us, including investigators, feel a deep sense of regret. Could a simple change in protocol have saved Polly's life? What should be done to make sure something like this never happens again? We'll get to the solution soon, but first, think about the impact of that missed opportunity. How often do similar oversights occur in our everyday lives, and what can we do to minimize them? Eventually, the breakthrough came when Davis was arrested again on unrelated charges. His fingerprint was matched to the crime scene in Polly's home. The moment of truth had arrived. The FBI had their suspect. But would Polly be found alive? Sadly, the answer was no. 
Polly Kloss had been murdered within hours of her abduction. The tragedy left the nation heartbroken. But more importantly, it left us with pressing questions. What could have been done differently? What are the warning signs that society missed? The solution here is multifaceted. On one hand, we need better systems to track and manage repeat offenders like Davis. Could modern technology, such as improved fingerprint databases or facial recognition, have made a difference? Possibly. The pros of using advanced surveillance systems are clear. They can catch criminals faster and prevent future crimes. But what about the cons? More surveillance could infringe on personal privacy, creating an entirely new ethical dilemma. At the end of the day, the responsibility falls on all of us. As civilians, we must remain vigilant. If we see something, we must act. Had Davis's earlier behavior raised more red flags, could the story have ended differently? Maybe. It's up to us to create communities where people look out for one another, where potential dangers are spotted before it's too late. So, what's the real solution to the problem Polly's story presents? How do we prevent future tragedies like hers? The truth is, there isn't just one answer. It's about better law enforcement protocols, more effective justice systems, and stronger community vigilance. If you're still here, I want you to think about the role you play in making the world a safer place. Polly's story could have been anyone's story. As hard as it is to admit, no one is immune to such events. But here's the CTA, the call to action. We must push for change. Contact your local representatives, advocate for more stringent offender tracking, and stay aware of your surroundings. Together, we can reduce the chances of something like this happening again. And that brings us to the final loop. What happened to Richard Allen Davis? He was convicted of Polly's murder and is currently on death row. While justice may have been served in some sense, it will never bring Polly back. But what can bring peace, even in the smallest way, is knowing that we can all play a role in preventing future cases like this. Stay aware, stay vigilant, and never assume safety is guaranteed. That's the only way we can truly honor Polly Klaas and others like her. Thank you for watching. And if you found value in this story, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. By doing so, you help spread awareness. And who knows, it might just save a life.